This is Henry Frederick of Headline Surfer, and this is the Roundtable. To my left is Stan Escudero, a foreign diplomat retired from the countries of Tajikistan, Uzbekistan, and Azerbaijan, and most recently the uh, chair of the Republican Executive Committee for Volusia County. And to my right is Dana Doherty Swanson, a uh, state committee woman for uh, the Republican Party, former delegate to two national conventions, and also a blogger for Headline Surfer. Uh, in addition to what Stan does. Uh, the Daytona 500 Speed Weeks. The big announcement, besides Danica Patrick being on the pole and Jimmy Johnson coming back and winning, uh, NASCAR, uh, excuse me, the Daytona International Speedway wants to expand the racetrack to offer more amenities. Um, they're talking about putting in $250 million of NASCAR's money to do this, um, seeing that, you know, the Speedway has been around since 1959 and it, and about outworn its usefulness in terms of the way it looks. It's not modernized like a lot of stadiums. Stan, it was talk about um, making a proposal to get sales tax concessions from the state with the modernized facility. Sound pretty good, right? Well, frankly, I uh, I support the request. I've I've seen a presentation on it, and uh, given the fact that the speedway is is uh, is the core. Of, along with the beach, mm, that which brings tourists to Daytona Beach and which supports its economy. And given that they're investing some $250 million of, in fact, their own money, it seems to be perfectly reasonable that they should request a tax abatement. It's no different than professional football teams do for their statements, uh, for their uh, stadiums, or baseball teams, or what have you. And uh, this is uh, our equivalent of the Superdome. So it makes perfect sense to me, and I think the way it is presented and put together, uh, and particularly since we're not talking about reductions in tax monies that would go to the county or the city, that it would benefit us locally uh, a very great deal, and it's something that we should certainly support. Now, Dana, I talked to um, Glenn Ritchie, the former mayor of Daytona, <laughs> and also with uh, Jeff Hans, the CBBs are uh, in Daytona. and. Um, there at the press conference that we were at when uh, Joey Chitwood of the Speedway announced this modernization. you think the taxpayers would be supportive of this considering the economic development issues that are behind us? Well, when you think about it, we want to keep Daytona as the number one most recognized name in NASCAR because how many weeks a year does that keep our hotel rooms <coughs> occupied in Daytona, helps keep jobs in Daytona, the restaurants? How many waiters and waitresses are getting tips from people visiting the hotel rooms being booked? With NASCAR, with the Speedway being a primary, Daytona being the main focus, and when you think Daytona, you think NASCAR, we want to keep that front of the center. We want it looking good. Well, I would argue that you figure Speed Weeks is two to two weeks minimum. You've got the Rolex in January, <coughs> which has kind of like been pushed back a little bit. So it's almost like a mini Speed Weeks. Mm -hmm. And then you've got the, the smaller races leading up to the signature race at Daytona 500. Then in the summer, you come back and you have the Coke Zero 400. It used to be the Pepsi 400. Before that was a Firecracker 400. Whatever name you want to put on it, whatever brand. I would argue that between four to six weeks a year, the hotels are pretty much tied up with tourism. You take those four to six weeks out of the year schedule, there isn't much there. Oh, well, I think without, without that money, I think a large number of our hotels, our restaurants, bars, other types of establishments, business establishments that cater to tourists would go under, especially in these hard times. And you know, it's, it's, not like, it's not like the France family is going to move. They're as committed to Daytona as the rest of us. They have been ever since Bill France started NASCAR in Daytona. But I think that uh, uh, I think that I, I won't say that we owe them because, of course, they've made a great deal of money, but then they've taken the risks. Uh, I say though that we should recognize their importance to the city and the county, and we should respond by offering them this tax break. I think also people have to realize too, and you know, Dana, I think you readily concede that that when you have a big enterprise like NASCAR and, and the, the, the Toronto International Speedway. <coughs> and it's on prop, public property. The city owns the land. 
um, you're going to you're going to have to offer concessions in order to get what what they bring in, which is the sales tax. I mean, you get that do you get those benefits and. You, it's amazing how they pour all this money into places like the Miami Marlins. They had all these free agents and they had the stadium filled and then they, the, the owner ships all the players out of town like he's done two, three times before. I, I would think that NASCAR, being a long tradition as it is, especially in Florida, see, it, it, either you can think of a team besides the Miami Dolphins that's been here as long as, as uh, Daytona International Speedway in Florida. The Orlando Magic is... 30 no, years or less? No, no, the professional teams used Florida uh, for, for spring training, for right. example, for, for baseball and that type of thing for a long, long time. But there weren't any any professional teams actually locating and playing here as their home base. Uh, and of course, gee, until until quite recently, relative to the Speedway. And I think people also... Speedway is what, put, is what put this part of Florida on the map. Yeah, and plus you've got South Florida, you've got Homestead Speedway. <coughs> I mean, Florida has two tracks. Yeah, but Daytona is the most well-known, and when you think about it, Daytona is so close to, you just go down 92, Orlando. you have the land, well, no, I'm oh. talking the West Volusia right. side, that for the hotels, you're not just talking Daytona side, you're talking throughout the county. Well, well the other thing, too, that people may not realize is that, sure, you're going to play a premium price to stay in a hotel like the Hilton in Daytona, but they have great specials if they do the multi-night runs. But you're going to get good buys in hotels in New Smyrna Beach, the Land, Deltona. Of course. Even even places like Orlando, you know, people will up. stay there because they want to go to the race and then they want to see the attractions. But and for that matter, why do you think the motorcycle has come to Daytona? It's because the speedway <coughs> makes one think of speed. It makes one think of automobiles and engines and 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 the kind of noise that you also hear from Harley Davidsons. And so they began coming for much the same reason. And now, if you if you drive, for example, if you go to Deland during Bike Week, you'll find that they have a mini Bike Week over there, and there are rides and runs all over the county, and the various cities, Sanford, Deland, and what have you. They play to that, and they make money off of it too. And also, when you think about it, is that the, sp the speedway in this age of modern technology about the HD TVs and things like that, the speedway needs to look its best on TV. And NASCAR, you know, it's also being visualized well, across the across the world. And also the Speedway nowadays, when you think about Bike Week, a lot of times that same area is also utilized for some motorcycle events and things like that. Swap me, absolutely true. Well, we have the two. You have the high ovals of mm -hmm. Daytona, like a Hot Wheels track, like when you're a little kid. But you have that erecta set look on the outside with this, you know, they're talking about putting skin around it having uh, 10 football fields worth of restaurants and amenities, escalators, on-site parking, which people have been crying about for years. Well, sure. I mean, this, every, is, this is It's a, it's this a is question a also of standing up to your competition. I mean, Daytona may be the best known race and racetrack in the country, but it's not the only one. I mean, there's Darlington, there's Talladega, uh, there are others. Well, and I can and tell you also, like Texas, we don't, we don't want the interest to shift to some other well, city, even like some Texas, other state. Even like Texas Motor Speedway, mm -hmm. I mean, you're talking about a modern, a beautiful facility that has a lot of the amenities we've talked about. But go ahead. And also, one other thing is that when you're talking on-site parking with restaurants, it will also make it much more convenient for people when they're going to the facility and leaving the facility because so often you're trying to, you have to go into a race what, three, four hours before it starts because you know you're going to be in traffic jam. Well, it's a whole lot easier to go in there three, four hours and then go to a restaurant on a site and sit there and you're not feeling like I'm just sitting in the bleachers for this time and also the experience when you're leaving. If you have, if you figure, well, I can go and have her. You can have dinner. Dinner after the race and sit there and relax and let the first rush of people, you're going to have it's going to help stabilize the parking going to and from because people won't mind going earlier because they know they're going to have the traffic time. patterns won't be as haphazard. Exactly, because I've been outside of that area during. I used to um, work for United Way, and I met was at the Target parking across the street. <coughs> that takes a long time. It's a whole day event of people just going in there and basically kind of being at standstill. I would think that. I, I interviewed uh, David Santiago, a state representative, uh, the Republican who just got elected in November, 
um, from Deltona, and he's the one that's putting the legislation in for the sales tax uh, benefit. And we were amazed that it's taken till now for something like this to happen. You would have thought that this would have been done a decade ago when all the NFL and Major League Baseball teams are talking about modernizing their stadiums with detractable roofs and, and things like that. Well, I don't know, Henry. It's happening when it's happening. Uh, but the point is, I think we're all agreed here. Anyway, they can't go in much they are, the way they are fully is. justified in asking for what they're asking for and in making the investment they're making uh, by virtue of the fact that, that they have brought enormous amounts of wealth and they've brought many, many new jobs and will bring many, many more. Well, that's the uh, thing. I mean, the city and the county. there's been some argument that, well, <laughs> they, got, they already have the land for virtually nothing. Who, who are they kidding? They'll have construction jobs. How long can that last? They'll build this facility overnight. But you well, actually have two tell ways that of the guys who are working on the construction. Right, who have no pay right now. That's right. But you'll have actually two ways, like, like Sonny Agro and I were talking about, State Representative Sonny Agro were talking about today, is that you'll have the construction end of it, but that will then lead into the service industry jobs that will be created. Mm -hmm. Plus, I believe it'll force hotels and restaurants to enhance their structures and their facilities to compete because they're still going to want to have customers coming to them, you know, whether it's before or after uh, the thing. And, and the other thing that still amazes me is how many people still utilize campgrounds uh, throughout Volusia, even into Flagler County and even Brevard and Seminole. Mm -hmm. I, I would think that uh, this is a win-win all the way around for people that love to come here. I don't see any other way to, to describe it. Exactly.